And dear brothers and sisters, we welcome you to a new episode of Treasure Hunt. Um, in this episode, as we will continue with the same topic, the topic of the da'wah, or and specifically uh, the traits of the da'iyah, or the da'iyah Allah, the one who invites mankind to Allah, in order for his da'wah to be successful, he should um, attain certain tools, he should really have these tools for every profession, uh, in order for you to, to execute your uh, job successfully, uh, you got to have certain tools. So this is the same thing for da'wah. The best tools, you know, are of course from the Quran and the Sunnah as we learn together. Uh, you know, patience, uh, sincerity, knowledge, wisdom, all of these beautiful uh, traits that will help you in general as a Muslim. And specifically when you give da'wah. Uh, last time we concluded with kindness. And we mentioned, um, you know, that kindness is, is really considered to be a very important factor because um, no matter how knowledgeable you are, no matter how um, compassionate, um, you know, or, or no matter how, you know, passionate you are about your uh, message, uh, if you do not deliver it in a good way, uh, it may not reach the hearts as you uh, intended. Um, and uh, again, subhanAllah, being part of this uh, movement for so many years, uh, the movement of da'wah in the West, I can tell you that uh, I find the majority of the da'is, uh, the ones who actually are in this field, mashallah, they possess so much of goodness. They have lots of good qualities. But subhanAllah, when it comes to delivery, a lot of them, they, um, they, may, they may lack, um, you know, um, I would say, uh, the, the sufficient amount uh, of kindness or being kind uh, when they deliver, uh, subhanAllah, especially, it's tough. Wallahi, it's very tough, especially when somebody uh, in front of you uh, start offending your own Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi or offending your own book and says that, you know, uh, it was written by uh, Prophet Muhammad and it's like fake and Prophet Muhammad was this or that and, you know, they start with their um, accusations and allegations about his personality and all of these things. So it's, it's very tough. This is why it needs, as we mentioned before, um, a great amount of endurance and patience. Uh, at the same time, it has to be delivered in a very kind way. You as a da'i should be very loving. As we mentioned, you know, com compassion, to have really compassion. Yeah, and I mentioned that example of oh, the Prophet ﷺ pray, you know, just... Uh, crying over, over the funeral of that Jewish person. Um, and it just, kindness is, is everything. Because the moment you, you, you get into that confrontational mode with somebody who start, you know, offending your prophet, offending your religion, offending you personally, uh, you know, once, once you start arguing with this person, once you start uh, being confrontational and uh, challenging everything he says, you can do that, but then argue in the best of manners. This is what Allah told us. Use the best and the nicest arguments. Do not uh, get them into that confrontational mode and be as kind as you can. Because, uh, you know, once, once the person lose his cool, as, he, as they say, and um, start being aggressive, he may really lose the heart of that person forever. And, and, and think about it that way. You know, this person... Um, is wallahi brothers and sisters, and you'll be shocked to hear this. When I hear all these um, uh, accusations to our Prophet Sallallahu and to Islam, and all these like negative things uh, on the tongues, um, you know, of the public, I well, wallahi, I blame myself first. I blame us Muslims because we uh, refrained from da'wah. Subhanallah, it, it shocks me when I when I come to find out and especially after visiting Medina for the first time, uh, years and years back, and I loved that place, so peaceful, extremely pe beautiful place, f full of serenity and peace. And I was like wondering, you know, who, who can leave such place? This place is so beautiful. Wallahi, it's like full of peace. And it's just, you feel, you feel subhanAllah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming down on this place. But then you only find 10,000 Sahaba, 10,000 companions buried in Medina, in Al-Baqiyah, right? While the rest of the Sahaba, tens of thousands of them. How many Sahabas do we know? We actually, according to the narrations, they say uh, they were over 100,000. 
and they vary between 120 and 140. Uh, but anyway, the majority of the Sahaba, the vast majority, they died outside of Medina. Where? Places like Turkey, uh, places like North Africa, um, you know, places like um, Central A Asia, and they, they died even um, in Europe. Some of them are buried uh, in Europe. Um, you'll find that they went all over the earth because they understood the sacrifice that, that they, have to, they have to make in order to spread this deen. SubhanAllah, brothers and sisters, we really are taking our beautiful faith for granted. When I look around and I see the suffering of humanity, just traveling the world east to west and uh, living with so many different nations and, and just dealing with them on day-to-day -day basis. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, we are in the greatest blessing we can ever imagine because I find all the solutions, I mean, subhanAllah, that, that humanity needs, all these people who are suffering from depression, suffering from uh, crime, suffering from even poverty. Wallahi, all the solutions are in Islam. The, the, the Sahab after the death of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam, they went all over the earth. And let me tell you something, you know how it started? After the death of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the entire Arabic Peninsula, they committed apostasy. They left Islam, they committed apostasy. With the exception of Mecca, Medina and At-Ta'if, these three cities remain upon Islam, while the rest uh, they left it. So, <sighs> SubhanAllah, we, t we find that only those few thousand Sahaba, they took it upon themselves to spread this deen to the rest of humanity. And they did. And they sacrificed everything for the sake of this religion. While we are in the 21st century enjoying freedom of speech, freedom of religion, um, unlimited communication with the world through the internet and what have you, and, and, and media, so we find that, uh, you know, if we compare the means of da'wah that the early Muslims had and the restrictions they suffered from compared to what we have, it's, it's unbelievable. There's no even comparison. Yet, uh, a lot of us do not really take the time or, or exert any effort, and, and, you know, towards that. But as I was saying, that, uh, you know, the Sahaba, they sacrificed everything for this deen. Brothers and sisters, you know, um, again, I have to remind you, if you, if you were to uh, be born and not ever be exposed to Islam, think about it. What would be your condition today? What would you be doing right now instead of watching me and gaining knowledge and trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through gaining knowledge and learning da'wah? What would you be doing, really? Maybe you'd be um, at a bar. Maybe you'd be, um, you know, doing something extremely different without mentioning examples. You all know what I mean. Uh, but subhanAllah, uh, you know, again, back to the point that I find that those people who are uh, so-called uh, Islamophobes, they have a, a free stage completely empty because nobody is competing with them on that stage. Nobody's taking the microphone from their hand. Nobody is mentioning um, anything about Islam. So if you, as a Muslim, do not give da'wah, so they will seek da'wah from other channels, from Islamophobes, from media outlets that have, take, have taken it upon themselves to attack Islam and destroy Islam and ruin the image of Islam and Muslims. So Allah, I, I, as I was saying, they are the victims of our negligence of my negligence, of your negligence. But alhamdulillah, it's not too late. Inshallah, we can change that. And this is the, uh, the purpose of this program on you know, learning how to invite people to Islam, inshallah, in the best of way. From the time you say, you say hi until the time uh, they say their shahada, inshallah, you'll be, um, we'll be going through these stages. But right now we are uh, in the stage of foundation, basically. This is like the first step you to be powerful to uh, attain um, and obtain all these tools that you need to accomplish inshallah your uh, obligation and, and your task and and again it's not islam is not about conversion islam is not about you know uh, forcing people to, to accept faith or anything like that or uh, you know as uh, you know, allah subhanahu wa says in the quran uh, twice 
first uh, ayah is بعد أعوذ بالله الشرجيم لا إكراه في الدين and the second one is in سورت يونس the first one was in سورت البقرة second one says فأنت تكره الناس حتى يكونوا مؤمنين that you do not you do not force people to be believers you cannot force people and the first one says no compulsion in religion so and and again it's not getting about gaining more followers it's not it's really about caring about humanity it's really caring about uh, your, your fellow brothers and sisters. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, I pray every single day to every living being, not just uh, humans. I mean, subhanAllah, it, it's what our Prophet Sallallahu had taught us. He taught us to do this, to care for the world. You know, Rabbi qawmi fa'innam Subhanallah, we find in, even in the worst times when um, his own people and the, and the, and the Arabs, the, the polytheist Arabs, these to uh, torture the Prophet ﷺ, him and his companions. And he would say what in return? Oh Allah, guide my people. Because surely they do not know. Meaning that if they were to know that I'm a prophet, you would believe in me. So please guide him. And he'll find, the, and he, he'll be doing this, he'll be praying these prayers at times when we find that they stoned him with uh, stones and they actually made him bleed. And they, they actually really hurt him. They killed his companions. They fought him. He, he would use that prayer at all times. And he never gave up on them. He never gave up on them. And so we should, uh, you know, I, I mean, subhanAllah, there's no comparison between the uh, kuffar of Quraysh, the, uh, the polytheists of Quraysh, and the, the non-Muslims uh, these days. Because um, a lot of them, wallahi, if they were to know the truth, they would believe in it. And this is why we say, that uh, Islam is that religion of fitrah, of natural disposition. Once a person is exposed to it, he'll accept it and he will find it to be uh, something normal, something that this is the way how it should be, as we heard it a lot. Yes, it makes sense. I cannot tell you how many times I heard, yes, it makes sense. So inshallah, until next time, um, let's practice these characteristics and let's inshallah start from today and approach uh, the non-Muslims that we know and do our task and do our job. May Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you. May Allah gui guide the people through uh, you and accept your efforts. Ameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.